Okay, quick netiquette lesson. When chatting with someone over the internet, typing like this is fine. On the other hand, typing like this, not cool. You should stop shouting. Anyway, you're watching Tech in a Nutshell episode three, and yes, today we're talking caps lock. So as we all know, the general function of this key is to piss off people on the receiving end of a message. The caps lock is a toggle key which, when pressed, causes letters of Latin and Cyrillic based scripts to be generated in uppercase. Usually it only affects alphabet keys, meaning that other keys do not get altered. Well, usually, depending on the keyboard layout and or operating system being used, this may vary. For example, if you activate the caps lock while using the German quartz layout on Windows, you'll find that the number keys get affected as well. It actually has even more nuances, but this is in a nutshell and we don't have all day. The caps lock key is the descendant of the shift lock key which can be found on mechanical typewriters. Introducing the Remington Standard number 2, the first typewriter to feature upper and lowercase typing. Early versions of this machine had a lever that would lock the typewriter in either lowercase or uppercase mode, as well as two buttons for temporary shifting between the two modes. Even though the keys weren't labeled as shift keys, that's what they essentially did. And in the time to come, the shift key would become a standard feature on practically all typewriters. But then people started being little crybabies because their little fingers would hurt from constantly having to hold down the key, so manufacturers just gave them the shift lock key, which would physically lock the whole mechanism in place. Kind of like the Remington 2 did in the first place. So yeah, just goes to show that innovation hasn't really changed much ever since. Now don't get me wrong, capital letters are great. Heck, they can be the difference between helping your uncle jack off a horse and helping your uncle jack off a horse. But when presented with all caps all the time, well, people tend to get irritated. Typing in all caps has been considered to be the equivalent of shouting for a very long time actually. Online newsgroup posts from 1984 suggest that people felt this way even in the early days of the internet. But this is a convention that predates the internet era by at least a century, as seen in an edition of the Yorkville Inquirer from 1856. And it goes even further back than that. Capital letters have been used to express grandeur, pomposity, or aesthetic seriousness for thousands of years, according to Professor Paul Luna of the University of Reading, at least since Roman emperors had monuments inscribed in all caps with their own heroic accomplishments. Okay, back to caps lock. Fun fact, nowadays the key has not one, but two holidays. Well, parody holidays to be more exact, but still. One is, um, celebrated I guess? on October 22nd, and the other is celebrated on June 28th in honor of the late American loud pitchman, Bill Mays. Get on the ball, and you'll never have to pour or measure detergent again. So how does it work? Celebrations aside, a lot of people just don't like the poor bastard key. In fact, in 2006, the organization CapsOff suggested that manufacturers should delete the caps lock from their future keyboards altogether. One example of a company that took that route is Google, which removed the caps lock from the Chromebook keyboard and replaced it with a search key. Studies have shown that long spans of text in all uppercase are harder to read than spans of text in lower or mixed case. Professor Susan Weinshank from the University of Wisconsin argues that this is so not because words in all caps are inherently harder to read, which appears to be the common belief, but simply because we are used to reading words in mixed case. Oh, and here's another fun fact. If you make a YouTube video about the caps lock, all the posts in the comment section will mysteriously appear in all caps. Yeah. Fact. Anyway, that would be all for this episode of Tech in a Nutshell. Big thank you to everybody who helped my funny little Twitter account surpass a thousand followers. Sky's the limit from here. Also, thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.